Hello and welcome to Making Waves by Totterbird. If you enjoy kit building, making electronic circuits, and do-it-yourself projects, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of my most excellent videos. In front of us with a Vigor Time, also known as Vogar Time, this is the VT15. This is a do-it-yourself four-digit digital alarm clock soldering kit. You can find these on Amazon, retailing around $12.99. I got mine on sale for $10.99, so watch for deals. Um, pretty cool kit for the money, 11 bucks, and you got yourself a four-digit alarm clock kit. Let's check it out. Comes in a plastic bag. Nice. Let's go see what we get inside. I'm going to bring forward a little board here so I don't lose any of the parts. Yeah, so I like the company. They make some really easy-to-make kits, and they're fun and they're useful, especially for us radio guys. I'm thinking about making this kit uh, into a UTC clock because you can run it on batteries or optional USB power. So that's perfect. So you just plug it in and let it run. Not worrying about the battery usage. Okay, so illustrated manual, nice. Main PCB. This is the front. Really cool. Everything's really simple. I'm guessing this is probably a 10 to 15 minute build. As you can see, there's not many components there. And the hardest one's already been pre-soldered there, that little micro surface mount controller chip. So there's that. And on the back here, it has settings to set the clock, set the alarm. And it says something called bonus settings, which I'll try to do. It's got uh, short pressing for F1, F2, F3. So you can switch the alarm on time speed. So if it's running slow or fast, you can adjust it. That's pretty neat. And then bright, brightness adjustment. Very handy there. I like, I like that. So there you go. So we'll look at that. Cool. So we'll set that aside. Look at the manual last year. Let's just go see the components we get. Got the display oriented like this. Top of the PCB there. Show you how to orientate it. Four digit. Nice. Cool to have that. That's the main part. It's going to tell you the time. What else do we have in the bag? We got some standoffs for the battery bay, I'm guessing. We have a USB to DC connection. This is to power the clock all the time. That's going to be a one I use the most. This is if you want to go portable. Uh, 2 AA battery holder uh, mounts to the back of the clock. And it's also the stand up part. Helps the clock stand up. I think that's it. We got some components. Okay, a little bag full here. We have three, it looks like, resistors. We have a little piezo buzzer. You can see that. That's uh, two momentary switches. And we have, looks like, three capacitors and a crystal. There you are. So again, pretty basic uh, as far as electronics go. This is going to go together really fast. I'm probably not even going to do pictures of the build process. We'll probably just go straight to the um, final product when I'm done. So we'll fade to black and I'll just build the kit. I would do it live for you guys. I know you've been wanting me to do that. But uh, it's difficult because i got a tripod and it's in my way. Until I build an overhanging camera system set up, uh, I'll be doing the pictures and just showing you the kit finished but then i can go over how easy it was or how hard it was <laughs> instruction manual schematic there i was trying to get a close-up of what that chip does there it is if you're wondering must be the clock circuit okay there's that and then uh principal overview you can read that if you'd like tools you may need i'm going to show you my tools i'm going to use and the component list is right there Everything we need should be there. Uh, soldering, pretty basic. It's not going to be that difficult. And that picture's here to help you along. Showing you cutting off the extra excess legs there. Uh, orientation for the electrolytic capacitor, pretty important. Orientation for the display LEDs. There you go. Let me sure I get this all for posterity. So you have instructions. Install the buzzer. There you go. So there's a, okay, there's a transistor I missed. Okay. And then, there you go. You can power it up. And how to set the modes. Definitely doing this for posterity because then you can freeze frame it and you'll have it forever. There it is. Good deal. So no built-in battery. Yeah, that makes sense. Just, just, if you just engage the power, you have to reset everything. Okay, so that's the instructions. Done. So let's go ahead and show you some of the tools I'm going to use to build this kit. So I'm planning, we'll leave this PCB front and center. Um, I have uh, some diagonal pliers, probably just to fasten some of the hardware, I'm guessing. 
I got some flush cut uh, side cutters. Uh, I probably need a new pair. Um, these work good for modeling. Um, also using to cut the legs, excess uh, leg material off the board. You can pick these up for around, I think, 10 to 15 bucks. They're not too bad. Um, Phillips uh, screwdriver to attach the battery box, I believe, the standoffs. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, for inspecting my joints, uh, I use a 10 power loop. Let's see, this looks good on camera. If I can show you the magnification, you can really get in there. Isn't that cool? You can really do a close up. Let's see if I can get it. There you go. So you get this nice 10 power loop. I always have that handy. And of course, I use a headset, but a lot of people don't have headsets. But these little loops are fairly inexpensive, too. You can pick these up for almost like five bucks. They're pretty cheap. Oh, get that frame. And what else do we have here? We have um, some solder I'm going to use. I'm going to use some of this uh, Kester. This is a, you don't have to buy this much. I think this is a pound. Yeah, I got a pound of it. You can get the lesser amount. 60-40 uh, with the uh, rosin core. That way I don't have to use flux if I don't want to. I tend not to. And this stuff's easy, low melting temp. Very. This is the stuff you should be using. Uh, it does have lead in it. So if you're nervous about lead, you can wear protective gloves. As you're soldering, some people like to do that. I've never had an issue, so I've been soldering since I was a kid. Yeah, and I'm old. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be using the solder here. And, of course, soldering iron. Um, I have a fancy one, but tip size, just to give you an idea. I'll probably be using, like, a screwdriver blade like that size. This is perfect for the pads on the back here. You know, you just see it's got the perfect size here. And what you do is you touch the pad and touch the leg. And then you put your solder on the opposite end, and it will wick around into the joint. And you only spend about one to two seconds on each. You don't do more than that. If you're spending too much time, your iron's too cold or it's dirty, so clean it. Uh, and then you can also add some extra flux if you have some. And that may also help uh, the joint for you. So there you go. Looks like you can program it too. Look at that. All right, so that's what I'm going to be using for the tip size. It's neat. I can swap those out on my unit. And of course, here is the main board. So there we are. Tools of the trade and what I'll be using. Rocking. Okay, so I'm going to fade to black. I'll either have pictures of the build process or I'll just go right to it. And we'll do like a mini review. And I'll kind of give you my opinions on the kit, how well it holds the time. Uh, so that's going to be important. <laughs> Alrighty, wish me luck. Here are pictures of the build process. In this first picture... I populated the PCB with three resistors, two ceramic capacitors, two momentary switches, and the crystal. This next picture, the project's finished. This went really quick. Uh, I installed the electrical capacitor, the buzzer, the transistor, and display. No polarity on the capacitor, buzzer, and display. Also took a picture of the microcontroller, a nice close-up, in case some of you want to look it up and want to program it and have it do something different. So let's look at what's on the table. Here it is, in the dark. It's easy to see the clock. Uh, it's been holding time very well. Uh, I would say it's holding it perfect. We don't have to worry about doing fast or slow, or changing the speed. So there it is, the finished product in the dark. <laughs> we'll go ahead and turn some lights on because once the lights go on, you won't be able to see the clock in action. But there it is, 24-hour uh, clock. Let's go ahead and I can show you the finished product. Get the lights on. All right. So right now I'm powering it with the two AA batteries. Um, I'm going to lower this down, get up close and personal, show you the components. So first, before I go any further, let's do a little uh, re mini review. So dimensions, we are almost four inches. We're three and seven eighths of an inch in length. And we have a width of two and a quarter inches. And then we have a depth, including the battery bay and the front display, of one and three quarter inches. Pretty neat. And it stands pretty well, too. So it's a really cool clock. Um, for the money, it's a fun project. Uh, really impressed with the result. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a little size comparison. I have a CC pocket. Of course, it has an onboard clock as well. Again, I have to kind of cover this so you can see it. Uh, it's just too bright to show, but when the lights are off, it looks really good. Um, so there's that, CC Pocket. we got CC Skywave in the house. Now this is really cool, this is a UTC clock. Um, if you're using like an old school analog shortwave radio, 
Oh, I don't have any on my table. Everything's digital. Actually, I do have an analog. I'm going to grab it. You guys haven't seen this radio in a while. They stopped making it. This is the Sonra this is AM FM shortwave radio. I could be using this clock to log stations. There you go. Pretty neat. This is a neat radio I modified. See, it's just cool to be able to modify things. Uh, this took a BL5C and I put 18650 in there. So you can always modify your stuff. That's what I like about do it yourself. <laughs> it's always fun. All right, so yeah, so that's pretty much dimensions and they have a deck of cards here in case you don't have those items. There you go. Iron Man, he's the man with the master plan. He loves do it yourself projects all day long, man. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so yeah, let's go look at it real quick and uh, give you final thoughts on the project. Again, it was very quick. It took me about 15-20 uh, minutes to build. Um, I just kind of took my time. So let's go ahead and look at the front here. As you can see, the segmented display lighting up nicely. It's been the two batteries for about a couple hours. I'm not sure how long it'll last on two AA's. Here's our transistor. One of the resistors, now the resistors were easy. Uh, you had two 10K and then one 330. So it was pretty easy. You didn't even have to look them up because they had these together and they just went separate. That was neat. Uh, the buzzer, there's polarity. There's a plus sign and it goes to the right of the front of the board. It's marked also underneath the positive. So no polarity on the buzzer. There is the uh, close-up I took of that microcontroller. It's kind of hard to do it right now on the video. Our capacitor, electrolytic, negative to the top of the board, positive to the bottom of the board. Okay, so no polarity on that one when you build it. Um, things that don't have to worry about noting polarity are the switches. Got momentary switches. Set the clock. Here you have your little ceramic capacitors, the crystal. And uh, now on the back side, I'll we'll flip this over. We have the battery bay installed that kind of just wrapped the wires around. Not real neat. I guess I could have shortened them, but I always like leaving the extra wire. Uh, it solders right to these pads for the battery bay. Got a positive and negative there. And then over here is the DC input jack that I had to solder in from the front. There's three uh, connections that had to be made. And it's kind of cool. There's little eyelets there. So you could actually tap off the 5 volts if you need to. That'd be interesting. Almost like you could... Uh, I'm wondering if you could, use, yeah, take a positive and negative and maybe uh, make a uh, a charging circuit for something else. Because uh, when you plug in, it should disengage uh, any of this uh, charging factor. And then when you take it out, that'd be kind of neat. I wonder how that would work. That'd be pretty cool. Maybe you could do a lithium battery for this thing, make it rechargeable. Ideas, ideas. <laughs> but uh, overall, pretty impressed with the build. Um, everything's real simple on the back here. Again, it shows clock setting, alarm setting, the bonus setting. Um, like I said, brightness adjustments, time speed. Uh, it's pretty much self-explanatory, and I'm going to like to show you how to do it. And over here is where you can program the microcontroller. Awesome. So yeah, for $10.99, it gets a big thumbs up. Rock and roll. <laughs> Loving it. Um, it's a great kit. These guys are great. Vogue time. Or Viger Time, or no, Vigor Time, I think is what it says. Vigor Time. Um, they're just a great company. I love it. Fun project, fun time. <laughs> uh, there's other projects out there. They're clock kits, and they're just, they're cheesier. They don't look as nice, not as finished. They're not well thought out. Or, you know, this is fun, like for a classroom setting to build a clock. You know, say, hey, I built my own, and it's an alarm clock, too. Remember that. Um, it's, it's it'll wake you up with this little buzzer. Um, that's pretty neat. That it's also an alarm clock. So and you can save it. Um, very handy. So there it is. Gets a big thumbs up for me. Um, links below. Check it out uh, if you want to build it. Uh, definitely. This could be your second kit. It doesn't have to be your third or fourth. It could be your second. It's that simple of a kit to build. Uh, just the first one should be the Alenco Learn to Solder Kit. Because it'll come with a soldering iron and a solder and some experience there. And once you build that circuit and all the little steps and processes you do, you'll be able to build this no problem whatsoever with the included uh, iron they give you in that kit as well. I'll have links to that video, the Elenco first kit um, that you should be doing if you're getting into soldering. So there it is, the VT15. Uh, so definitely, uh, if you like these kits, subscribe at the bell icon, get notified of future reviews. And of course, three, comment below what you think about the VT15. Is it a pretty cool kit? Do you like the idea it's a clock, UTC, alarm, 
under 10 bucks. I mean, you might be able to get under 10 if it's on sale. Uh, like I said, mine was 10.99, but uh, I like it. I'm really enjoying it. All right, cool. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in my next video.